Let's return to our car on a ramp physics experiment from before. Again, the students have a setup for measuring the car's distance down a ramp at regular intervals of five hundredths of a second. And here's what the data looks like. What can we determine from this collection of data? Again, let's find out. First, we'll paste our data into Desmos, and we have a nice scatter plot. And next, Let's consider a best fit line or curve. And we again don't see this as a linear trend. It seems more like an exponential or quadratic trend. So let's figure out which is the better fit. Trying the exponential fit first. Y1 tilde A B to the power of X1. Again, we use y1 and x1, not just y's and x's. And that looks pretty good. We see that r squared is 0 0.9838. Very solid. So, that might be the right one, but let's try the quadratic fit. y1 equals a x1 squared plus b x1 plus c. And we see that that looks even better. We see r squared equals 0 0.9994 for this one. That's really good. That's even better than the exponential relation. Thus, we recognize the trend in this data as being represented best by a quadratic equation. So, let's write out our equation with our new values. A equals 0 0.0174, B is negative 0 0.0393, and C is 0 0.251. And we have an equation. If we were asked to predict the car's position after 8 hundredths of a second, we'd have a few choices. We could plug in x equals 8 into our equation and solve for y. No problem there. We could also click around on the best fit curve until we find our x equals 8 and then see what the y is. Or, to be a little faster, we could enter an additional equation that is x equals 8. And there's a line. And now that makes zeroing in on our point a little faster. In that, Desmos will identify the intercept here much more quickly. We could be pretty confident about our prediction that the car would be really close to 1.053 centimeters down the ramp after 8 hundredths of a second. And we'd recognize that our prediction was based on interpolation. That is, x equals 8 is amongst the domain of our collected data. Now, if we were asked to predict the car's position after 60 one hundredths of a second, we could use the same methods, but we'd recognize that this prediction is based on extrapolation. That is, it's outside the data's domain. And we wouldn't be quite as confident about this prediction. Perhaps friction on or within the car starts to have a significant impact after x equals 50. And the graph maybe bends down out here. Maybe. Maybe not. Bottom line is that it's hard to be certain whether the same trend continues beyond our data collection. Thus, predictions based on interpolation instill more confidence than predictions based on extrapolation.